Have you ever had a plant that was sentimental to you? Perhaps it was in your grandmother's yard and you want to keep it as a memento to the person that she was. You want to place this in your yard. On today's episode, we're going to go over how to do some small scale asexual propagation by cuttings. And we'll be using one of the more popular flowering shrubs here in the south. This is Camellia japonica debutante on this week's edition of The Plant Doctor. in the intro that it was starting to rain so when I started to film the intro there it was 90 degrees and sunny but it is summertime in Alabama so with that being said uh, it can get humid really quick and it can rain out of nowhere and that's exactly what has happened today so if you hear the rain in the background that's that's what's going on but uh, I have a finished product here. This is going to be our end goal. So I did this maybe eight weeks ago. And so I'm going to look at these on camera for the first time with you guys. So I don't know if these have rooted or not. I have a sneaking suspicion that they have because the leaves do look pretty good on these. But we're going to take a look at this. So uh, in a previous video, uh, we looked at a propagation box. And I believe I had 16 square feet of growing space in there. If that's out of your budget or you're just looking to grow one or two plants, like I said in the intro, to maybe memorialize somebody, it, it grew in their yard, and, and you want to keep that, that plant as a memento, this is the way to do that. So you need a few things here. First thing you need is a pot. So this is just a one gallon pot. Uh, if you've ever bought a, a daylily at Lowe's or, or a, a local garden center, you've got one of these laying around, okay? Uh, you could use anything really. You could use a, a terracotta pot that you're not using. If you have an old Rubbermaid container, a small Rubbermaid container that you wouldn't mind poking a few holes in the bottom because you do need some drainage here. Uh, you could use that as well. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my pot, and I just, for this, I, I picked up some old wheat fabric. Uh, so I'm gonna put this down in the bottom because we're going to use sand as our media, and sand will fall break, uh, straight through our drain holes if, if we don't do this. But you could cut up an old t-shirt, any type of cloth that is water permeable. Make sure you get it down in the bottom. You can see there we've got it down in the bottom pretty good. Uh, so the next thing we need is our sand, and I have it down here on the floor. So I'm going to take my sand, and I'm going to fill the pot. So I want to show you the consistency of the sand that we're working with. This is not fine textured sand. This is coarse sand. I'm going to get closer to the camera here so you can get a good look at, at what we're looking at here. That's a piece that needs to be busted up so you can see the consistency. But you can see here, it does have some pebbles in it all the way down to that finer stuff. So we do want a coarse sand when we do this. So the next thing I want to do is prepare my cutting. So I have Camellia japonica debutante here. So this is the debutante Camellia. I'm going to take the leaves off of this guy, except the top two. And then what I want to do, I'm going to take my pruners. And what I like to do before I do any type of propagation is to sterilize any tool that I'm going to use. I like to keep things sterile because this is a very good way to transmit diseases in plants if you do not have sterile tools. I'm going to take the leaf. I'm going to cut that leaf in half. I'm going to cut that leaf in half. And that is what we're left with right there. The next thing I want to do, I want to wound this plant. So I'm going to take my pruners. see there I just made a wound down towards the bottom of the stem so now I'm going to be using uh, garden safe take root today this is a rooting hormone you can see right here I believe I picked this up at Lowe's for pretty cheap maybe five bucks or something I'm going to pour out a little bit of rooting hormone it does not take much one thing I do not like to do is to stick my cuttings in the original bottle. I always like to pour out my rooting hormone. 
and dip my cutting, stick my cutting, and then any excess that I have, I get rid of it. I do not put this back into the original container. Reason being is if there's any uh, bacteria, virus, any sort of fungus, pathogen in general on my cuttings, I have now put that into my bottle and the next time I go to root something, I'm just transmitting diseases around all my cuttings. So I like to keep things extremely sterile while I'm doing this process. I'm just gonna dump this over on the side right here and just incorporate it into the pot. I did not do that for any particular reason other than I just needed to get rid of it. So what I'll do, I'm going to take my alcohol, put a little bit on the lid, wash it around. I'm gonna set this off to the side and let it dry out while we do the rest of the video. And at the end, I'll, I'll put the cap back on the rooting hormone. The next thing we want to do Find you a, a, just an old water bottle or a Coke bottle, something, this is a, you know, a, a 500 ml Dazani water bottle. And this is gonna work perfect for what we wanna do. So take a knife, you can use your pruners here, whatever you wanna do. And what we're gonna do is cut the bottom off of this water bottle. I'm going to loosen the lid up. I really don't like keep the lid airtight, so I'll put it on there and I'm gonna turn it about one full rotation. I'm not gonna cinch it down all the way. I like to take some copper sulfate or dacanil, some sort of fungicide, one squirt. And we've just created a little greenhouse for a camellia. Let's talk about watering this guy. I never water directly through the water bottle. I will water around the water bottle probably every other day. I just want to saturate it. And that is going to keep our cutting very moist. We want to keep this moist for six to eight weeks. Uh, you could leave it in there longer. In terms of sun, keep it out of direct sun. We want to keep this out of direct sun because if direct sun is shining on this bottle, it's just like a, a greenhouse effect. It's gonna get very hot inside this bottle. So what I do, I put it in my garage. I stick it over in the corner. Uh, I do get indirect sunlight in here, especially in the afternoon. So the, the sun sets over in this direction. So west is this way. And there'll be some indirect ambient light that does come into the garage, but for most of the day, they are out of the sun completely. I believe that's very important to having success with these cuttings. You do not want them to overheat. Uh, another place you could put them, I've heard of people doing this small scale propagation and putting them underneath their deck. So if they had a deck on the back of their house, they'll just put them up under there for a little bit. So that's another good option for you to have. Or if you have a, a very shady area in your yard, perhaps you have a canopy of trees, uh, you could put that one of these at the base of the tree and keep it watered. So re remember, water around the pot. We wanna keep it moist and it should be okay. The, the main thing is just keep it out of the sun. All right, so this is the exciting time. This is also somewhat a nervous time for me because I'm on camera doing this live and I'm hoping that the roots are on this guy. Alright, so let, let's take a look at this. I, and so this has been about nine weeks. I've had this going for about nine weeks now. This was just a little experiment that I did to make sure that this was going to work before I presented it to you guys. So I'm going to take, and I actually put two of them in here. Uh, so you can put a bunch in one pot. So, if, you know, I could almost use like a, a half gallon milk jug on this and put several inside of that half gallon milk jug. Or I could probably use a bigger pot, maybe a three or a five gallon pot and use a, a one gallon milk jug. You could probably get several dozen cuttings underneath that one milk jug. So uh, just keep that in mind. You're, you are not really limited to size here. You do not have to use a small water bottle. If you wanted to do several dozen, you could use a milk jug, just cut the bottom out of it, and it's the same process. You're just doing more of them. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see what we have here. I'm gonna 
So what I like to do, I don't like to just pull them straight out. I'm gonna use my fingers. I'm gonna see if I can get where you guys can see a little bit. I'm just gonna kind of dig around a little bit. I'm gonna get my finger up under and try to pull from the bottom. I got them loose enough now. So I'm gonna sit back down. I think I felt some roots. Let's see what we have. Ah, guys, look at this. Look at this. Look at these roofs. Look at that. That's great. So now, let's talk about what to do with them now that they have roots on them. I'm happy, guys. This is, this is fantastic. This actually, uh, we're batting a thousand here. We're two for two. All right, so I should have a larger sample size to, to see what our actual percentage take rate would be. But right now, I can tell you guys, we're at 100% take rate. It does not get any better than this right here. I'm, I'm really excited about this. All right, so what would I do with this? I would take these and place them in a, in a pot that has some sort of uh, potting mix in it. You could use uh, your standard potting mix that you pick up at Lowe's. Uh, if you had some pine bark mix, that would probably work as well. I'm going to continue to keep these guys out of indirect sunlight for a little while because they have been in shade for so long. I don't want to go from one extreme to the other. Uh, so I'll probably pot them up, keep them watered. I'll find a place in the yard to put the pot that maybe gets two to four hours of direct sunlight every day. And then I'll probably keep that pot there for, let's see, it's August now. So, I, you know, through the winter, it wouldn't hurt to keep it there. And then in the spring, I want to find a place to put these guys. Uh, so camellias tend to like a little, a little more shady condition anyway. You put them in full sun. Uh, the leaves will burn back a little bit. So this is what we would consider a part shade or part sun. Those two terms mean the same thing. Uh, so four to six hours of direct sunlight every day and, and the rest of the time shade or, or filtered sun. And, and they do pretty good. So that's going to be my goal. I'm going to pot these up. Uh, I'll probably leave them in uh, that pot with the potting mix until March or so, and I'm gonna find a place to plant these guys. I'm really excited about this. Uh, guys, thanks for watching. I really hope that this helps you with your, your propagation endeavors. Here again, this is just a very small scale. I'm hoping to help somebody out there that has that special plant that is a memento or, or has a, a is sentimental and you want to keep it for yourself or you want to make more of them to, to give to friends or relatives, this is a very good way to do that. Thanks for watching, guys. This is The Plant Doctor. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. It helps us a lot here on the channel. We'll see you next time.